Okay. How do we make out this weekend with our uh, free agents, with our fab budgets? Anybody get Austin Riley? Anybody get uh, anybody else? Uh, Keston Hura, or whatever his name is. Anybody get Nicky Lopez? Anybody get any one of the top free agents? The top youngsters that were just recently called up. If you did get them, let us know how much you paid for them with your fab. Good morning to everybody, and uh, thank you, Unholy Toledo. Uh, welcome aboard on a lovely Monday morning. Monday morning it is after probably the biggest uh, fab fest that we've ever had. So once again, if you had uh, been lucky enough to uh, put 70% on one of these guys of your free agent budget, maybe you picked one up. And the question is, who did you drop? That's it. We find that so many... Uh, so anxious to get some of these uh, youngsters, uh, would probably drop somebody who may be even better. So uh, there you go up. That guy picked up Austin Riley the day he got called up. And yeah, I kind of like the um, I kind of like the daily moves. Uh, what I really like is this. Uh, it's not first come first serve. I really believe every day you should have free agent bidding. How about that? On any given day, every single day, you can bid up to, uh, say, up to midnight, set it up, or make it 2 o'clock in the morning, whatever you want, so everybody, every time zone is the, sa- is the same. But how about uh, free agent bidding on any any day, okay? And you got to pick up a player, you got to drop a player. Would anybody, has anybody ever experienced that? I played in a league that did that, and believe me when I tell you, that was a lot of fun. That really made you stay on your toes. That uh, made you really follow the game every day. Uh, yeah, uh, that's it. So much for the Cal Contral, uh, Quantrill stream. Yep, that's what it was. So if you got any one of those guys, let us know. If not, here we go with uh, pretty chock full with all the stuff this morning. So let's get right to it. And we'll open it up with uh, a big question. Okay, how about this for a question? Uh, we all know that stolen bases are tough to come by, right? With stolen bases down so much. Uh, there are two catchers that lead the cat. There are two players that lead catchers with stolen bases. Two that lead catchers with stolen bases with three. There are two of them that are tied. Could you name the two catchers that are tied for the league in stolen bases, okay? Yep, that guy, it is an amazing league every night, you know, and make it late enough so that um, anybody, you know, on the West Coast, East Coast, whatever it is, everybody's got an equal opportunity to uh, put players in, okay? So if you want to do that, everybody bids every day on the free agents, and I think that's a, it is a great idea. I've been in a league like that. Name the two catchers that lead the lead Major League Baseball in stolen bases. And Meckert gets it. There you go. <laughs> Meckert right on the game. Yasmani Grandal and Yadier Molina. All right. So uh, there you go. Nice going. Who's got the most multi-hit games this year? Name the player with the most multi-hit games. All right, Meckert. Let's see how good you are now, buddy. Uh, the, the the most multi-hit games, right? Um, if you name that, and, and look, I'll tell you, uh, you got, I don't think you'd be surprised with any, uh, I'm talking about the top six. Uh, I will tell you that Cody Bellinger is number two. Javier Baez is tied for number two. David Peralta is number three. Uh, Nolan Arenado is number five. Jeff McNeil is number four. Jeff McNeil is number four. But who's number one? With the most multi-hit games this season. All right, anybody want to take a shot at that? And uh, all right, so that gets us going. All right, that uh, White Sox Al, good morning. Good morning to Brooks, and uh, good morning to everybody in the chat room. So now let's go around the horn to see what happened yesterday. Robbie Ray had been on a roll. He entered with a three uh, th- uh, with a one nine eight ERA and thirty five strikeouts in thirty five and a third innings, but he couldn't get anything over the plate. He had no command at all. 
He needed 29 pitches just to strand runners at second and third. In that very first inning, he walked in a run in the third, and then another run came in on Kevin Pillar's ground out. So he allowed two runs, three hits, walked four and four innings. He struck out six. Not a great game for uh, Robbie Ray. Ed Caprio was here. Good morning, Ed. Saw a picture on Facebook that looked just just like you, but it wasn't you. So uh, <laughs> the Diamondbacks... Rather than a 500 homestand, uh, so some bad defensive plays, the Diamondbacks win 4-6 and six at home against the Braves, the Pirates, and the Giants. Pirates and the Giants, although the Pirates could be a formidable team. So they haven't done, uh, they haven't done it this way. Through 24 games at Chase Field, they're 11-13. and 13. The 14 teams in the majors... Um, it's uh, really the Diamondbacks of the 14 teams in the majors with a winning record. The only team that's under 500 at home is the Arizona Diamondbacks. Okay, and uh, does anybody uh, did anybody draft Zach Godley? I know I was big on him last year. His most recent start, he allowed four runs on three and a third. Um, so they're trying to figure out if he has any options. He's going down to AAA. Wilma Flores left the game. He had a right foot contusion in the third inning. He was hit by a pitch in the first that bat of the game in the bottom of the second. X-rays negative, but we'll see. Jake Lamb had an off day Sunday, but Tori Lovello said he'd be back at the uh, uh, working out at the Salt River Fields Monday. He didn't want to put an exact timeline, and don't forget, you know, they don't really need him that much anymore. I mean, they're not, uh, you know, Christian Walker's doing pretty good, Escobar's doing well, but they'd like to get Lamb between 15 and 25 at-bats before he returns. So he's uh, worked through injuries last season, and they are optimistic that he could be back uh, in a week or two, maybe, probably two. Freddie Freeman uh, as we move to Atlanta, is home in four straight games. First time in his career. His 11th homer is his 200th of his career. He tied the game in the 7th. And uh, Josh Hader pitched two perfect innings. Interesting that coming into this game, nine hits he gave up, five have been home runs, and uh, four to lefties. That's it. Fulton Newich entered with an eight-point ERA in four starts. He allowed only three hits in six innings. For Atlanta, Acuna led off the game with his ninth homer. Uh, and um, after that, Woodruff didn't allow another base runner to reach second until Freeman hit one in the seventh inning to tie the game at two. Fulton um, uh he made his fifth start of the season, his best start of the year. No question about it. Uh, he resembled slightly the pitcher who made the National League All-Star team. Uh, a lot more than the pitcher who gave up 26 hits, 23 runs, 19 earned in 21 innings. So Fulty could be a guy to grab right now. He could be on the upswing. Uh, I would definitely take a shot with Fulty, National League pitcher on a good team. All they need is a bullpen, and that seems to be coming around. Last season, don't forget, Fulty had 12 quality starts. Uh, that's six innings or more with three or few runs allowed. Uh, Sunday was his first start, uh, was his first uh, quality start this season, and his ERA is still pretty bad, 6.9, okay? Uh, good morning to the beer man, and to Brooks, and to Greg, and to Cam, and to DK Loose, the Donkey, the Oki, the DVD, Eddie Caprio, hey, we've missed you, Eddie. Nice to have you aboard. George is here. Jimmy, Jimmy Ross, Meckert, Methical, that guy, the real double A, battling it out over the Game of Thrones all over Facebook. Unholy Toledo, White Sox Al. So uh, great to see you all, okay? <laughs> the Milkmans, yeah, there you go, Ed. No question, it looks just like you. Uh, Steve Seachak, who I happen to have, in, I, I, I drafted Seachak. Uh, I dress so now in, in Tell Wars, uh, I got Romo, Connolly, and Seacheck. <laughs> How about that? If they can win some games, I'll get some saves. All right, Seacheck actually closed it out yesterday. He pitched two and a thirds scoreless innings, got his fourth save. The Cubs held on for a six to five win. Rizzo homered, uh, Almora had three hits. They took two of three from the Nationals. 10 1 and 1 in the last 12 uh, series. Unbelievable. Hendricks retired the first 11 
Washington batters, but he didn't allow a hit until Suzuki got a leadoff single in the fifth. But Rizzo hitting 315 with uh, 108 career at bats at Nationals Park. Loves it there. Seven homers, 16 RBIs. Next time you play in DFS when uh, Anthony Rizzo is in Nationals Park, you got to put him in your lineup, okay? So uh, Baez was hurt on uh, the final step as he charged a slow roller through for a close out over in the third inning. But he played three more innings, made a similar play, and then the heel began to stiffen. So Madden took him out. Baez says pretty good chance that he'll play uh, in the next game. And uh, there you go. So C-check was good. Brandon Morrow, they say when he comes back, there's a good chance he may not come back. Could you see the sh- – now, if C-check picks up the pace – they may they may refrain, but look, when Theo Epstein gets close to getting into the World Series, winning the division, you know what happens. They trade Glaber Torres for a, a rental. Uh, do you mean to tell me that they won't go over the luxury tax to get Craig Kimbrell? If they offer Kimbrell three, uh, three years and $40 million, uh, there's a chance that Craig Kimbrell is going to wind up on the Chicago Cubs. Okay. So uh, there you go. Just keep in mind that could happen. But if Cichak, uh you know, gets to form, it's going to be tough. Then it'll be a little different. Hugh Darvish is going to pitch against Jake Arrieta. That's the man he had that Darvish replaced. And Arietta made his first appearance in Chicago since he signed with the Phillies as a free agent. Neither has pitched up to their top billing, okay? That's for sure. So we'll see if this is a motivating factor. It's going to be an interesting game nonetheless. Tanner Roark for Cincinnati as we're going through the National League. He tied a season high seven strikeouts. He allowed just two hits, two runs. Three walks and five innings, and now he's 0-3 against the Dodgers. But Yasiel Puig, this is uh, this is not good. He received a standing ovation for jumping above the right field wall in foul territory, and he reached into the crowd for a catch to end the sixth inning. But he did uh, get a sprained right shoulder. So there you go. He exited in the eighth inning. He felt that shoulder tightening up. He said nothing bad, but give me a break, will you please? He's going to see how he feels Monday morning uh, after he sees the doctor. So we're all hoping if we have Tanner, I have him in every league. Uh, not Tanner, I'm in Yasiel Puig. I am hoping. I mean, you know, it reaches a point when uh, you have a, if you have a good team. Now, this is, I wonder if anybody feels like this. Phil Chaplin is here. Good morning, Phil. If you have a good team and you get an injury on your team of significance, it's really a bummer, right? Everybody, everybody's got to agree with that. But when you have a bad team, and you and you and you get a couple of injuries, it's almost it's almost good, right? <laughs> hey, what do you expect? Look at all the injuries, right? Yeah, that's that's how it works. Right now in uh, in labor, I am hit. I got Tyon out. I got uh, Trevor Williams out. I got uh, I got three of my starting pitchers on the DL. Can't remember the last one. Oh, Annabelle Sanchez, but that could be a positive. All right. Um, so there you go. Uh, so Tanner Roark started for the Red. Wouldn't it be interesting if Washington had Gio Gonzalez and Tanner Roark as Andy entering the uh, entering the room? There she is, just going out. Uh, the kid is home from college. Mark is here and uh, not feeling well. So um, uh, Mama Lou goes to the CVS and uh, picks up some medicine. There you go. All right, Mark. Take it, baby. You'll be fine. Uh, the Reds were facing the Hun Chin Ru, who came in at five and one with a one seven two ERA, and over his last three starts, two and zero. Oh, we all know this. Two and zero oh with an 036. Isn't it interesting with all the guys, right? With the Sale and the Scherzer and the Kluber and all these guys, it's been Hun Chin Ru who has been the best pitcher in Major League Baseball, and uh, I was I went after Hun Chin Ru. But here's what I did. My thinking in trying to get Hun Chin Ru was I'll get Hun Chin Ru, and then when he goes down, I'll get Urias, and collectively I'll have a full year of pitching. That was my thought process. Never did I think that I wouldn't want Hun Chin Ru to go down. All right, so uh, Ru ended up going seven shutout innings. Scoreless streak is now 31. We all know this. It's all over the newspapers. All right, Bryce Harper is back. 
All right, onward for the second straight day. JT Real Muto also went deep. The Phillies beat the Colorado Rockies three straight. Harper tie-breaking two-run shot in the sixth. I mean, and the other day he hit a 466-foot drive on Saturday. So Harper hitting good. Ryan McMahon hit two home runs. Thank you, Brandon Rogers, for motivating uh, Ryan McMahon.